Thank you for joining me. I am your organizer advisor, Lisa Winfield, your life enhancement coach. And my goal is to help you enhance your life. I want you to find more joy, happiness, uh, less frustration, less stress, more time, more energy, and just overall more fulfillment out of your life. And part of the thing, part of the way that we make that happen is through my process. Um, and we talked about that yesterday, so I want to go ahead and get started today. Um, this will be a little bit of a long video, and we're going to talk about all of our components, our document organization, our thematic organization, um, our exercise and health, uh, health and beauty routines, our wardrobe, and our every nook and cranny cleaning. So we're going to get started, and I have a couple of tips in there for you. Okay, so document organization. Today we're going to talk about important documents. Um, we're, all week we'll be discussing important documents because they come first. I call them critical documents. And what they are are I, documents that we normally store in a safe or a safety deposit box. Now I use a safe at home and I like to store my important documents in a binder in a safe and I'll tell you why. In the case that you have to evacuate your home in an emergency, these are the documents you're going to want to take with you. These are your birth certificates, social security cards, titles to your vehicles, insurance documents, um, licenses, marriage licenses, uh, you know, all of your legal paperwork. All of those things are really important that we keep in a safe, secure location. But we want to be able to take them with us in the case that we store them in our home and we have to evacuate. I also like to store them in a zip top bag so that they can be sealed in case I have to evacuate during a storm or a flood. My documents will be safe as I leave my home. Um, also if there's a fire and the fire department you know, puts out the fire with water, it will add an extra layer of protection. So today we're going to talk about birth certificates. Now the, if you have a birth certificate issued by your hospital. Um, you know, oftentimes it comes with a little footprints on the back. That's not an official birth certificate. That's a certificate of birth. But what you really want is a certificate of live birth from the Department of Vital Statistics in the state in which you were born. And it's going to come on official paper. So this is your birth certificate um, paper. When you get, if you have one, go ahead and make a copy. But if you don't have one for yourself or other members of your family, you can simply contact the Department of Vital Statistics in the state in which you were born and they will issue an official birth certificate, which is what you're going to need to get a passport or oftentimes in order to uh, register a vehicle, you need some sort of birth certificate. So again, not the little one that you get from the hospital, but the official document from the Department of Vital Statistics. And like I said, I s just simply slip those into a zip top bag. Oh, and by the way, in case you need one in a hurry, they most states can expedite it to you. So it's inexpensive, it's great to have on hand, especially if you have children, um, or if you're gonna have to be traveling and you need a passport, you wanna make sure you have that birth certificate before you apply for your passport. And then what I do is I slip them into a page protector in my binder and then this goes into either my document safe or my larger safe and I want to make sure that these are handy but safely stored in the case I have to evacuate my home. We'll be talking more about the documents that I keep in here for the next week as we start to organize our paperwork but we want to make sure that we have a plan for our documents. So now let's talk about our thematic organizing. Yesterday we did our vitamins. Today we're going to do our prescription medications. And first and most importantly, we want to make sure we have a safe place to store medications, vitamins, both prescription vitamins, over-the-counter meds. Because we want to make sure that our pets and our children don't get to them. So what we want to do today is we want to go and gather all of our medications. Check your purse, your gym bag, your car, um, kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, 
most likely the places where you're going to store those. Gather them all together and create a safe, dedicated space in which to store them. So this could be a locked container on a high shelf. Um, it can be a high shelf in, in the bathroom, but someplace that's not going to be accessible to children or pets. The second thing you're going to want to do is check the expiration date. Um, you want to make sure that your medications are up to date. You don't want to take any medications that are beyond their expiration date. Now there's controversy over that, and I understand uh, some medications are, are good beyond their expiration date, but in my opinion, my best advice is don't risk it. Um, contact your doctor and update, get the most updated prescription um, formula because we make advances all the time. So while you're going through your medication and checking the expiration date, if you take medication daily or um, you have prescription medication that you may be taking frequently, I suggest that you write those down on a business si business card size piece of paper. Uh, something like a card stop and then write the medication the dosage and the frequency slip this behind your driver's license in your wallet in the case that you're in an accident or a, um, paramedics need to be called for an emergency situation you can direct them or someone can direct them to checking the card behind your driver's license so that they'll know what medications you're on and you can avoid any kind of medication interaction en route to the emergency room in the ambulance. It's just very helpful medication or information for your paramedics to have on hand as they're transporting you. Just a piece of advice. Um, the other thing is while you have that card that you've made for your wallet, you can also communicate that with your doctor just to update hey this is what I'm taking this is the dosage this is the frequency everything okay make sure that your doctor is well aware and updated um, you may want to go ahead if you haven't seen your doctor in a while just go ahead and make an appointment for just a quick update you want to maybe have your blood pressure taken your blood work um, just so that you can get a baseline just like we did with our credit report yesterday on our financial well-being, let's talk about our physical well-being. Just communicate with your doctor if you haven't seen your doctor in a while. Talk about the meds you're taking, the vitamins you're taking, your exercise. Just kind of get a baseline, this is where I stand meeting with your doctor. Okay, so medications, expiration date. Oh, if you need to dispose of any medications, remember we don't flush them, we don't throw them in the garbage. There is a fluid that you can get from your pharmacy. I'll post a picture of that in this video. At the end of the video, you'll see the picture and you can put your medications in there. It will dissolve them, you can seal it, and then you can take that to your uh, local transfer station for toxic uh, chemicals and they will, um, they will dispose of it. You can also check with some of your pharmacy your pharmacy, uh, whether it be your local pharmacy or your big box pharmacy like CVS or Walgreens or Rexall or even Walmart, they oftentimes have a kiosk where you can drop off meds. And then if you have meds that are opioids or narcotic meds, you can talk to uh, your local law enforcement and tell them you need to dispose of them. And oftentimes they have an amnesty day or they can direct you on how best to dispose of them so that it's safe and it keeps um, you know, all the drugs in your prescription drugs off the streets and out of the hands of young people so and and your pets so let's safely dispose of our medications if you need to okay also I forgot to mention yesterday January 1st is the day if you don't check on the di the times that you turn your clock backwards or forwards daylight savings time January 1st is a great time just to update your batteries, check your smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors to make sure that your home is safe. Just a little tip. Okay, and uh, let's talk about our health and beauty routines. Well, today is the day, if you can, it's raining here, so not a good day to be outside, but this is our outdoor pet, family, fun, get outside and have some outdoor activity day. It's great for um, you know, getting out and throwing the football, riding bikes as a family, taking your pet for a walk. Incorporate as many people in your family or your pets 
as possible. Get outside, get some fresh air, sunshine, vitamin D. It'll make you feel so much better. It just, it, it revitalizes you. Also, remember to hydrate. I hope you checked that hydration calculator yesterday um, so that you make sure that you're getting enough fluids in your body every day. It will help with your metabolism. If you're trying to lose weight, it will help. It helps flush toxins from your body. It helps us feel more energetic, helps us sleep better, lowers your blood pressure. It's just good for you. So make sure you're getting enough water every day. Um, uh, also, you know, take time for stillness. Uh, whether you meditate, you can pray, you can just relax, you can read a book, have a cup of tea, read a magazine, take, you know, just take time for stillness. Take time just to shut your mind down, push away all the pressures, all the challenges, all the things that are disturbing your peace, and just take time to be in stillness. Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, is a great resource. There's meditation apps, um, there's meditation guides, YouTube channels, soft meditation music, healing um, frequencies. So take some time, listen to some music, relax, shut down for a bit. It's really important that we give our bodies that break from all the stress and stimulus. So. Um, Yoga is also a good, combines your exercise plus um, some meditation and some breath work, which is really positive for our health. Okay, also, let's see, what else are we, I need to check my list. Clean eating, okay, so I'm continuing to uh, incorporate meals that I have in my cookbook that part of our document organization, we'll get to it later, is what to do with all those recipes that just kind of are straggling around. Um, I've compiled them into a cookbook. And so this year, I'm going through every recipe and preparing it, and then I'm posting it on um, this page. Uh, in, in this video, you'll see what I'm cooking for tonight, how it turned out. So tonight I'm having trout with mushrooms, because I have mushrooms to use, and I'm also using doing an apple soup with spiced croutons. Um, I like to use the food that I have. I don't like waste. I really object to wasting food and wasting money and wasting resources. I just like to be a good steward of the blessings that I've received. So money and food and resources are blessings to me, and I don't like to disregard them or disrespect them in any way. So wasting food to me is really uh, a disservice, and it, it really to me is just bad management. Um, I like to look what's in my refrigerator, in my pantry, in my freezer, and I like to use them before they go bad. So I have two containers of mushrooms. Mushrooms are healthy foods, so I'm going to make a grouper with mushrooms or trout with mushrooms. It just depends on what the fish market has. Okay, um, I think that's it for our, oh, exercise 15 minutes. That brings me to, remember when we talked yesterday about gathering all of those uh, little things that we purchase to you know, improve. We do this usually every January, we buy some sort of little exercise gimmick. Um, we're gonna put those to work for us. Now, what we wanna do is we want to gather them all together so that we have them in a dedicated space. Now, I encourage you to find a little area in your home that you can create an exercise corner or exercise spot. Um, it, I keep mine near my treadmill. I like my treadmill to look outside. I like the area around my treadmill to be decorated nicely so I don't avoid. We avoid things that make us uncomfortable. So if your treadmill has a bunch of clothes on top of it or your bike has a bunch of clothes or your elliptical has a bunch of clothes or it's got a bunch of clutter around it, you're gonna avoid it. Make it a clean, inviting space. Decorate it with plants, pictures, soft music, um, a good view, of whether you like to watch TV or Whatever works for you, set yourself up for success because you want to encourage yourself to get on that uh, equipment. But also keep your little um, exercise box, bin, basket, whatever with your other equipment. So I keep mine in this little box. Now I have, you know, my BOSU ball and my hula hoop and all those other things stored there. But, you know, these are just the little things that tend to end up in the bottom of a closet or in the garage because they're clutter. I like these little squishy things. Um, weights and then little hand weights. Um, your stretchy bands. This is a stretchy 
something. Um, and then also any kind of DVDs or things that you could plug into a TV while you're working out. Um, your yoga mat, your yoga blocks, all of your exercise, healthy exercise, physical enhancement um, items. You want to have it in a dedicated space and you can put them right near your equipment if you have equipment in your home. Okay, so I think that's it for our health and beauty routines for today. Let's talk now about every nook and cranny cleaning. And I hear the big gasps. <sighs> I know we're all tired. We're all, we, but we need a fresh start. We need a clean, sanitized, healthy home to give us a sense of peace, calm, and fulfillment. So remember, we use our compass row strategy. So we're gonna start in a room, one room, one wall a day. Today is the north wall, so pick a room. I'm gonna do the living room, uh, partly because I'm gonna take down the holiday tree, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. But what you wanna do when you, every nook and cranny clean a room, the first step is put on some eye protection and maybe something over your hair, because we're gonna sweep the ceiling. You would be amazed, especially if you have a ceiling fan, how much dust and dirt gets trapped in that acoustical ceiling uh, texture. So we're gonna sweep all that. We're gonna remove as much dust and dander as possible. Debris that filters through the, swims through the air. We wanna remove as much of that as possible to increase the, the air quality in our home. So the first thing we're gonna do is sweep the ceiling clean your ceiling fan or light fixture. I've got some videos on the YouTube channel, The Organizer Advisor, that specifically address how to clean a light fixture, how to clean a ceiling fan, how to sweep your ceilings. Then, on the north wall today, we're gonna to take everything away from the wall, the furniture, um, the curtains, whatever is on that wall. So if you have a fold, a couch, we're gonna move everything away from the wall so that we can get into that wall with this microfiber wand. You can get these at any big box store. Even Dollar General has them for about $4. They're washable, which is very important, but you take this and you dust your wall because that ceiling, the sheetrock texture also can trap a lot of dust and you would be surprised at how much dust is on your wall. So just take this microfiber wand and wipe down your wall. Then you can use it for your baseboards, also behind any of your wood furniture or storage devices. Wipe the back of those and underneath as well to capture as much dust and pet hair and human hair and you know all that stuff that kind of accumulates underneath things. We're gonna wipe all of that away today. Then, if you have curtains or blinds, we wanna clean those, we wanna clean the windows, we want to clean the baseboards, and there's all kinds of videos for that, but I use Murphy's Oil Soap in a soft, actually just a terry cloth uh, wash rag. Why? Because the terry cloth wash rag has a little texture on it, and it's great for scrubbing the dust off the baseboards. So I clean with Murphy's Oil Soap and Water, one part Murphy's Oil Soap, four parts water in a spray bottle, and I spray the baseboards and woodwork, and I just use this terry cloth towel. This is washable, you can reuse them, and it's better than paper towels because they don't go into the landfill. Also, they're inexpensive. You can get a package of 10 at Walmart for about $3. Um, so, woodwork, you can also use Murphy's Oil Soap to spray your solid wood furniture. Also, I suggest removing all the drawers from your solid wood furniture so that your, um, just had to check and make sure my mic was on because <laughs> I filmed this before and no sound. Um, but also take all the drawers out of your solid wood pieces. You're gonna find things behind there. I almost guarantee there'll be some receipt or paper. When I bought a piece of furniture off the marketplace, I actually found someone's birth certificate and I was able to get it back to them. So take all the drawers out, you know, spray the inside cavity with Murphy's oil soap. It helps to keep the wood moisturized so that it doesn't crack, especially in the winter when we have our feet on. Then organize all the drawers, Purge what you need to, organize everything, and then you can replace the furniture um, back along the wall, clean the carpet underneath. If you have upholstery, person, upholstery pieces, you can clean um, that with a, 
handheld upholstery brush where you can spot clean. Um, clean your vacuum. So before you start today cleaning, every nook and cranny cleaning, go ahead and clean, give your vacuum a good cleaning so that it's fresh and it's, it doesn't have any dust or, or debris in it. So when you go to clean, please use a vacuum with a good filter. So that will help remove a lot of the uh, particles, particulates in the air in your home. Okay, so um, let's see. Also for cleaning glass windows, um, again, I go to a big box store and I get flower sack towels. You get 10 for about $4, 4 to $6. Um, but these are soft, they're lint free, they're reusable. You don't use paper towels and throw them away and contribute to the landfill. You can wash them in hot water with a little bit of um, laundry detergent as well as a little bit of bleach and they come out white and they're great for cleaning and they are just reusable and I, that's really important to me. So I use, believe it or not, Listerine and those of you who have known me for a while know that I use Listerine to clean all my glassware. And I, I use Listerine to clean most of my surfaces. Why? Listerine was developed in the 1800s as a surgical sterilizing fluid. So that means the surgical um, instruments were cleaned with Listerine. It didn't become a mouthwash until like 1960, 1970. It's an antiseptic. And I learned this when I was raising chickens and I was incubating eggs. If you spray the outside of the eggs with a solution of 50% Listerine, 50% water, it kills the bacteria on the egg so it doesn't permeate the shell and kill the embryo inside. So I thought, wow, if it's a disinfectant and it's all natural, now this is Listerine brand. The generic brands are not the same ingredients and they don't work the same, but this is the Listerine brand. I don't use the uh, mint. Um, I actually use the original formula, which is alcohol with um, essential oils. So it cleans glass and mirrors like you wouldn't believe, but it's non-toxic. And those of you who have birds as pets know that you can't use ammonia products. So a lot of times the Windex is out. So as a glass cleaner, this works really well and it's safe and it doesn't add toxins to your environment. So that's what I use to clean glass and any kind of surface that I want to sterilize. So every nook and cranny cleaning, north wall, remove everything from the wall, artwork, curtains, furniture, everything, pull everything away from the wall, clean the wall, dust the wall, clean the baseboards, clean the windows, any glass, any storage device, any furniture that has storage, take everything out, organize, clean, um, moisturize your wood, uh, clean your upholstery, vacuum the flooring, clean the flooring underneath, clean behind the furniture, underneath the furniture. You're kind of getting the sense now of how clean this house is going to be when we're finished and how good you're going to feel. One wall a day makes it manageable. Now, the other reason that I wanted to start on my north wall was because I'm going to take down my holiday tree and I had a little tip for you. Um, when I, I live in Florida, so when I store things in a bin, like my ornaments, I want to make sure that they don't uh, um, have moisture in them that can cause mold or mildew or that musty smell. So I make silica gel packets. Now you know those little packets, they're about this big and you get them when you buy anything electronic. They put that in there to absorb moisture so it doesn't get on the electronic items that you're purchasing but you can make your own silica gel packets. And what you're gonna buy is you're gonna buy silica cat litter. It's, there's many different types, but it's silica gel. You can get this at Walmart, Publix, most of the grocery stores carry it, but it's silica gel and it's what it looks like. And what you do is you buy some little gossamer bags so the air can get through, so the moisture can be absorbed and you just fill your little gossamer bag and then you tie it in a knot so it doesn't open in your bin when you store your items. But this is enough to absorb excess moisture to keep it from accumulating on your items in your bin, especially if you live in a humid environment. So I'm just making a little tip. So as we, and also if you're storing clothes, if you're going through your wardrobe, things are a little tight, and you're going to put them away for a while till you lose a little weight, you can put one of these in there as well. And I put a dryer sheet in so that they smell fresh, but it keeps the moisture from accumulating in 
inside your bin. Okay, let's talk about wardrobe. Sorry. Today, color orange. Yesterday we did reds. So remember, we're creating a rainbow closet where we are systematically going through our wardrobe. And creating a rainbow closet. My hair looks a mess. And what we are um, ultimately going to do is systematically wearing each garment one at a time, trying it on, seeing how it fits. If it doesn't fit, we're going to either store it until later or we're going to purge it. Uh, make, keep things in your closet that make you look and feel fabulous. When we return them to the closet, they're going to be fresh, ironed, laundered, ready to wear condition. So when we're finished with our process, our entire wardrobe is ready to wear. So today it's orange. If you don't have orange clothes, red or yellows, we're just going to kind of go through the rainbow and we're going to create our rainbow closet one color a day. Um, remember to incorporate your accessories and your jewelry. So even when you're, when you're finished wearing your jewelry and accessories, go ahead and give them a good clean, put them away, get them in ready to wear condition, and then kind of systematically go through your accessory shoes, handbags, scarves, purses, coats, the whole, the whole, everything that's incorporated in your wardrobe. Also, uh, don't forget about your ooh -la, la stuff, your evening wear, your intimate apparel. You want to go through those as well. Try them on, take a bath, light some candles, um, put on your nice nightgown or whatever you're comfortable in, uh, read a book, have a glass of wine, and maybe get into that um, place of stillness right before you go to bed so that we'll help you sleep. Okay, let's recap what we're doing just to kind of sum everything up. Exercise 15 minutes, outdoor family pet fun day, uh, hydrate, meditate, get into some stillness or, or if you pray, um, just anything to quiet your mind. Uh, take a bath, uh, eat clean, and what's cooking at the cottage tonight is grouper or trout with mushrooms and apple soup with spice croutons, so look out for that. Um, play some music. You know, while you're cleaning, doing your every nook and cranny cleaning, put on some upbeat music. It'll help increase your metabolism. Our document organization today is important documents, there are birth certificates, and we talked about how to store them. Our thematic um, clean, uh, organization for today is medications. Our every nook and cranny cleaning is north wall in the room of your choice. I'm starting in the living room. Um, silica gel packets for your holiday things before you pack them away. You want, want to go ahead and put a silica gel packet in those bins. Um, wardrobe is orange. Um, make sure you incorporate your accessories and go ahead and put everything back in ready to wear condition. And remember to check the battery in your smoke detector or change them if they need changing, if it's been a while. Okay, I think that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. Um, please like, share, subscribe if you're on the YouTube channel. If you're on the Facebook page, please comment. Tell me how your process is going. Tell me how your new year is looking thus far. And if there's any segment that you would like me to cover or questions that you have, you feel free to message me. I will be happy to address any questions privately if you're not comfortable commenting in, in, on, on the page. Thank you, those of you who have commented yesterday. Thank you 